Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest has made incredible strides from the digital screen to the big screen. And with his character, Zach, striving to get it right in BT's hit series, Sisters, will he ever? Please welcome Deval Ellis. How are you today? I'm um, well, how are you? Doing great. We're very happy to have you on Sister Circle Live. Sister Circle, sisters, it kind of... Yes kind of goes together. And they have a sister circle in sisters. Right, yes, right, right. Yes. We know that you're madly in love with your wife. Before we get into sisters and everything yes. you have going on, you're madly in love with your wife. Valentine's Day plans. Yes. What you gonna do? Well, it's funny. This is the first year we, we relocated to okay. Los Angeles. Okay. So my mom and dad are coming in. So oh. I have a nice date planned for oh. all four of us. Good, yeah. good. That's good stuff. Yeah. How do you keep the spark going, especially Having been a football player and an actor, like all of that, how do you keep it going? Well, for me, first I got to do my part. Mm -hmm. You know, I stay in the gym, make sure I'm well groomed. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, <laughs> constantly um, touch my wife, yes. make sure that she feels wanted and needed when I'm walking around the house. Just on a regular day, you know, right. smack the butt just right. randomly, right. look her in the eye and walk away. Right. I and mean, you know, stuff like that just keeps her knowing that I'm here. Yes, I see you. That's I see good. You. Right, right. You know? and, and you guys were on um, OWN's Black Love. Yes, yes. Um, and you said that she helped you through a dark time. Yes. Talk to us about the importance of that support from your spouse and her having to deal with you and then helping you at the same time. Well, I was, I was going through a time uh, where I was making a transition into professional football. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time I had been away from my family for a long amount of time. So the distance was a lot. This is the first time I was away from her. Plus, I was dealing with trying to make the football team. Yes. I had kind of fallen into a little bit of a, a opioid addiction. Mm. And I didn't realize it was a, a functional addiction. Like, I was still playing football, but I was just taking the pills to get through practice. Right. And it, it was at the end of the season where I realized that I had an issue. And it's important because when you have a, a spouse, and at the time, she wasn't my spouse. She okay. was just my significant other. She could realize the changes and call me out on my changes. Mm -hmm. And when you respect someone's word, and she was able to call me out on my changes and realize the difference, I had to take heed of that. And it allowed me to be more introspective and realize that I was doing some things that weren't in my best interest. Yes. And I just had to make those changes. And she was with me the whole way and uh, was just there, just very supportive and just showing me with love that she got me. Yeah, and we you just know? saw the clip, like you actually were brought to tears. Yeah. Can you speak to the importance of uh, a man, particularly a black man, showing mm. his vulnerability? Well, I, I grew up in a home where my dad was always very vulnerable with oh, us. Good. You know, um, we always hear these stories about fathers telling their sons, don't cry. Mm -hmm. Now, my father used to say, don't cry in front of other people that you don't trust. Mm. But you can, you can cry in front of me. Yeah. So um, I always felt that I could be vulnerable. Yes. And part of being an actor is wearing your vulnerability on your sleeve so yes. you can call on those emotions when you need to. So that's always been me. And... Um, when I feel like I'm in a trusting environment and I was with Cody and Tommy who produced Black Love, mm -hmm. I felt like I could trust them and then yes. it just allowed me to be vulnerable and share. That's fantastic. Yeah. We both talked about TV always being our long goal. TV yes. was always the long goal for yes. you. And now with this new role in Sisters, how did it even come about? Well, I've, I've always been into TV film. I was always the athlete who uh, was in the drama club. I always danced. I always was trying to sing. I can't sing. <laughs> but I try to do as many things creatively as I can. I could paint. But TV was always what I wanted to do. Yes. And I wanted to control my narrative and tell my own stories. So I started doing social media. Through social media and through the auditioning process, I met Tiandra Gale, mm -hmm. who's one of the casting associates at Tyler Perry Studios. Uh, she introduced me to Raven. I auditioned Love for Raven. Yes. And... Raven said, I think we may have a role for you. I had to go in audition with everybody else. Right. Flying for callbacks. And uh, Tyler was just like, I think you may be yeah, right for that. I love, I love stories. So, like, yeah. I can't wait it was today dope. I get my landed role. It was, <laughs> it was dope. It was right. dope. That's, yes. it, it felt so good. It yeah. did feel good. How do you resonate with your character? Well, it's funny because um, I think every man has a little bit of Zach mm -hmm. in him, um, especially when you're going through that transition. For people who don't know, Zach is dealing with recidivism. You know, he's been in and out of prison, so he's kind of lost as far as finding his manhood, but he has this beautiful, strong black woman who he's trying to show his love for. Yes. But he can't really stack up because he's not in a place financially or socioeconomically to mm -hmm. give her the things that she needs and she wants. So he's constantly feeling belittled. Yes. And um, through his belittling, he tends to lash out mm. in other ways, you know, using his Zach-isms and other <laughs> women. But um, I think a lot of men go through that. I remember when I was uh, transitioning from the NFL to trying to get into TV film, and I didn't know where my place was yeah. in the world. 
and you feel lost, but you still want to provide for your woman and your wife, and economically you don't have all the things that you want or need to give to her, so you feel lost. Yeah. So I could yeah. feel Zach in a okay. lot of ways. Good, good. Mm -hmm. um, speaking, speaking of loss, mm -hmm. L-O-S-S, -S, uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to L-O-S-T, yes. uh, we lost an icon yes. in, in, in Kobe Bryant, his beautiful daughter, Gigi, yes. and the other amazing people that were on that helicopter um, a few weeks ago. But your children, are in the Mamba Academy. Yes. Yes, two of your children. So what was that like for your family? Obviously, we know the impact, and I have never met Kobe yeah. outside of being yeah. in a, a locker room interviewing him as a sports reporter. That loss for your family, and how do you continue to steal the Mamba mentality in your children? Well, um, it's, it's funny, without disclosing too much, but we live very close to the, the crash site okay. where it happened. So we found out super early mm. through the Ring app, and I thought it was fake news. I was like, oh, a helicopter went down, it's fake news. Right. Then my wife was like, they said it was Kobe. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way it was Kobe. Ooh. I said, I don't see anything on social media, I don't see anything on ESPN. So then it started coming through on social media. And I was like, well, it's not on ESPN, still fake news. Like, I just didn't want to believe it. You no, know, I think none of us did. I didn't want to believe it. And then um, finally, when I saw it, it was real, I had to tell my oldest son, Jackson, and um, he cried, because he was just like, like, how? Like, yeah. this doesn't happen. And then the, the Wednesday is when we finally went back to the Mamba Academy. Mm. And um, it was hard. It was hard. But we went back and they trained like wow. normal because what Kobe embodies is that ability to keep going mm. no matter what happens. And he was, our, he was our icon. He was our version of the greatest to ever do it. That's when yes. I grew up watching. Yeah. And he willed himself through a lot of things, two more championships after Shaq left. So... I just tell my kids, man, what will Kobe do? Yes. You know, when you don't want to do things, what will Kobe do? There's the mamba mentality. Will mm -hmm. Kobe quit? And my son Jackson will be like, no, he would never quit. Kobe don't quit. And I'm like, exactly. So in Kobe's honor, you got to do the right thing all the time. Wow. So that's how we keep the mamba mentality right. going in my house. And you do the same thing. You're not going to quit. You're Can't not, quit. You're going to keep going. I can. I got three kids, yes. beautiful wife. I got to keep going. Right. Well, you we're know? happy that you're continuing to keep going. It's been a yes. pleasure to speak with you No, today. it's my pleasure. Thank yes. you so much. Thank yes. you so Thank much. Thank you. DeVal Ellis, everybody. Make sure you catch uh, DeVal on Sisters Wednesdays at 9 p.m. on BET and BET Her. And the conversation continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Thank you so much. Continue Thank you so much. On everything. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you.